<laughs> I've been today. Um, I have to first thank Lynn and uh, Johan for this fantastic uh, meeting, very interactive and very uh, thought provocative. And uh, let me try to. I've made some points g going through, and Sylvie started with us highlighting to us the importance of. Um, whether we agree on the definition or the word adherence, non-compliance, co concordance, whatever, but it causes lots of death. And in Europe, the figure was over 194,000 um, person or incidents. Um, and we looked into part of the problems of whether the problems start at initiation of treatment or implementation of treatment or when do we stop treatment. And our very good friend Girard took us into a fantastic lecture, as usual, into the conflict between, or whether it's conflict or not, the patient perspective and the healthcare professional, the doctor perspective, and whether there is a, do a conflict between both or not. We, as healthcare professionals, often think of evidence-based medicine, and the person with diabetes think in a different way. It's real life, it's everyday activity, and whether we need to really have a different approach rather than just guidelines and evidence-based medicine. And the issue of the inertia, the clinical inertia that hits so many of the healthcare professionals in everyday life, whether that is something that we need to tackle and tackle in a different way. And he gave us this excellent f uh, phrase, if I remember writing it right, the complex thoughts of the doctor and the patients, the, the, the thought process of how complex it is rather than just which drug or which step of, of treatment we should take. Um, then we moved into the discussion, and I have to uh, thank everyone who participated in this and certainly those who organized it, especially the, some of the comments made by um, the two most important members, which is the patients, because we very rarely have enough patients in our discussions. Uh, we hear each other a lot more, but we need to hear um, the people with diabetes. And uh, Clara, as, as, as Bastian mentioned, have said something very, very important, which is um, how can diabetes fit life, rather than changing the opposite. And especially for type one, where it cannot get better, it get, get worse. From, from uh, as, as life goes on. The point of motivation and what do we need for education for different people, I think has been highlighted in the messages. We have different types of diabetes. We have type one, we have type two, we have even lots of scenarios in life during the process of life, pregnancy, sports, getting older, getting other complications, so that we need education. The panel, discussed the importance of education. And it, as Kamlish mentioned, maybe we don't need more molecules. I, I would, wouldn't entirely go to the point that we don't need more molecules, but we certainly lack a lot more of the implementation of education of, of, in our everyday practice. We have some programs, but certainly they're not enough. And there is a, a lip service for education from pay, pay, pay uh, givers rather than um, reality that we are having enough patient education programs. Uh, diabetes coaches and the, and the role of diabetes coaches, who would give the education? Um, and it looks like from our discussion with the, with the discussion that we had from Bastian and... Um, uh, Juicy? Yes. <laughs> About too many different names and... Um, um, I was already practicing how to uh, pronounce the name of our co-chair, but uh, now we have even more difficult names. So the point of education and who can provide the education for the persons. And uh, Bastian mentioned something very important. When you need the information, you need it right now at this immediate moment. You cannot get that from a doctor or a nurse or a dietitian or a life coach. The only way is the social media. And maybe we need to engage a lot more with the social media. And um, the issue that we are concerned about is trusting the advice, 
then it is our role as healthcare professionals to make sure that we have robust social media that belongs to healthcare professionals, or there is healthcare professionals in it, rather than just belongs to healthcare professionals, that will ensure that there is enough trust. Um, I think much of the discussion was related to communication. Um, Xavier mentioned that, oh, and others mentioned that maybe we as healthcare professionals are not best trained to communicate certain messages. It's not just about which is the next drug to use. It's how can you uh, diagnose and um, tell someone you have diabetes or you're not going to sail anymore. Maybe if, you, if, if it was communicated in a better way, then Bastian wouldn't have struggled in the first 10 years of his life, as he did mention. So communication, it, it does look to me like the diabetes team from the discussion need to enlarge. Certainly not just primary care in one angle and secondary care and psychology if you are posh enough to afford it. And maybe we'll talk to patients and maybe we'll think of social media. It definitely needs all of this together and a better way of communication. Maybe we need better training of, I don't maybe need to know more about the next new drug, but maybe how can I best communicate with my colleagues and my patients. So the... The examples that Bastian have given us in his discussion, um, and certainly the sailing issue that he mentioned, although he wasn't sure that this is relevant, but to me it was very relevant. If he has communicated well enough that to have diabetes wouldn't stop you from sailing, but maybe we need to do something, he came to that conclusion himself, but 10 years later, unfortunately. And certainly the social media, as he rightly say, how can you get this advice in the middle of the night you, he, he might have had the education but forgot it. Who of us would remember every single thing? I had to write so many things and I'm certain I've missed so many of what was discussed. And that's on the spot, let alone a few months later. So having the information right now, right there, the social media role is quite important. And having the life coaches, whether they are um, healthcare professionals or, or not, and how can we train them and what's the characteristics. The pilot that was done in the Netherlands is certainly something that we would need to look into. So the take home messages I think is we need to look a lot more into this crucial problem of um, adherence, non-adherence, compliance. We need to work together better and certainly better communication, education for People with diabetes need to start from the very beginning and with very much more complex educational programs that would suit different stages of life and different backgrounds and different ethnicity, blah, blah, blah. And uh, eventually, uh, obviously, as Kamri said, it needs to be tested or ideally need to have some evidence as well. I don't know whether I communicated well with you to summarize this, but you trust me to do so, so I did. Thank you. <laughs>